this has been an unprecedented effort, not only for global public health control mechanisms, but also for vaccine development. We typically, under usual circumstances, say it takes five to 10 years to develop a vaccine. Uh, I think we've seen unprecedented speed, um, thanks to the actions of a few governments, the United States, China, and, and an uh, organization known as CEPI, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. Um, a significant amount of funding has been given out to companies to get vaccines ready and tested in humans uh, in an, a four month period of time. So when we're used to five to 10 year timeframes to see something go into first in human testing uh, on March 17th is really a remarkable thing. Um, does this guarantee success? Not necessarily. Um, you know, vaccine development is also characterized by a high failure rate. Often 93% is the, um, the failure rate between the animal studies that we first do and actual registration of a product. Um, so with that in mind, then the big questions are, you know, can we generate the right immune responses? Do we know what they are? Um, is a, um, a person who's acquired the infection protected against uh, future infection? Why is that important? Because if you can be, if your body can mount a defense that suppresses the virus and gets rid of it, then if we can develop a vaccine that does the same thing, then maybe uh, there's a good chance that we will succeed. The final thing uh, has to do with safety. I mean, you know, vaccines go through a very rigorous safety check uh, all along the three phases of development. And after that, uh, even after it's been registered, vaccine uh, safety is paramount. We don't know that a vaccine that's developed in you know, four months or I guess 12 to 18 months, which is the current estimate, uh, is really uh, safe. And I think that uh, organizations that are doing the testing like ours and, and others are really gonna be focused to try and get as much information that we can uh, on the safety of, of future vaccines. It's one thing to work and that's really important, but another thing is that the vaccine has to be safe. Is it safe to use hydroxychloroquine as the president suggests now? So we know that, that hydroxychloroquine has some side effects, and we know that azithromycin can potentiate some of those side effects. I think that mo many uh, people who are medical research scientists are really focused on not whether it's safe necessarily, because it has been in thousands of people, but does it work? And are we going to be able to show in the proper kind of study done very quickly? I mean, as the president said, we don't have years to prove that this works. I mean, we are going, we hope, to test this uh, to make sure that it either allows people to get off of uh, ventilators more quickly, uh, that it allows fewer people to stay in, I mean, that it keeps people out of the hospital. So people who are sick, who take the medicine can stay out of the hospital, that'd be great. Or that it decreases the period of time that a person is infectious. And all these questions are critical because they will help us both to treat people, but also maybe to prevent spread um, for people who are uh, mildly symptomatic but who are treated, maybe, you know, they won't um, be as infectious. So, I mean, there are lots of reasons to do the right study. The most important of which is we need to know that it works. Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.